Hey guys, Sean Manaloto here, and uh, today I'm going to do a sort of art attack like explanation video uh, regarding my new process on this piece that you're seeing right here. Um, it's called Valiant Nar, and uh, I'd like to say it's uh, my magnum opus so far. So, uh, regarding the process, I'll be explaining how I went about it because I'm pretty excited. I used a uh, unusual uh, well, in my case, unusual method, and I think I've done pretty well with it. Um, uh, it's it's coloring via the use of gradient maps. Now, uh, there are more popular art uh, artist websites or channels that uh, have used this method. Um, two examples, uh, notable examples, are Cube Brush and Peter Moorbacher. Uh, I'll put the, the links in the description so that you can check them out if you haven't already. So, uh, yeah, well, let's get started. So, now gradient maps, uh, if you don't know basically what they are is you make a black and white, you work in black and white first like this. And then uh, what happens is you apply color. So, it's pretty magical. Watch this. One, two, three, four. See? So, that's what happens. Uh, now, if you were shocked by that, here's the, uh, I'll be explaining the, uh, I'll be going through, rather, the process of that, too. So, uh, disclaimer, you'll have to really know your color theory and your, uh, your colors, your sense of uh, understanding uh, in regards to color, because this is not just, you can't just fool around and expect it to work. It's also very technical, and it also requires a lot of knowledge on colors and values and stuff like that. So, I decided to use this because Peter Moorbacher, this artist, he's pretty much my biggest inspiration as of 2017. Uh, I'll, link, I'll link him. Uh, you've probably already seen his stuff, like Angelarium or Angelarium is very popular in Patreon, uh, on Kickstarter sites, or on DeviantArt ArtStation. You've seen those. Uh, I think you've seen it. But uh, in any regards, uh, if you see that, if you see, if you click on my link, that's probably, you'll probably recognize him and say, ah, that's Peter Moorbacher. Yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty popular. Um, in the art community nowadays. So I decided to make use of this gradient map method and so far I think I've done a really good job as you can see. Uh, this is very doable, it's very workable I think. It's very passable as something that I would be happy with and personally that's not really something that is um, common in when I work on pieces. So anyway, uh, let's start. Okay, so what you do is you draw in grayscale or in black and white. And then uh, once you're done or once you think it's workable and you want to put colors, sometimes uh, you don't just, sometimes you can't just, uh, you can't take it anymore and just want to add colors in. I sort of get that. But if you're the kind of artist who takes his or her time with the black and white or grayscale painting, then uh, that's good. good on you, you know, cheers to you. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is add a gradient map. Now don't mind these layers over here on the uh, lower right because I'm going to do an art attack style thing where I make it so fast. So anyway, you see this here on the bottom of the layer tab, this uh, half black, half white circle. Click that, go for gradient map, and then as you can see here, it's kind of warped towards the gradient that I pick. So here in the gradient editor, which is accessed by clicking the gradient that you see, the half yellow, half black gradient, or yellow to black gradient. So the logic here is basically, the further it goes uh, from the left, uh, it'll, it'll change your image depending on the contrast. So the left reads blacks, or the dark, the dark part of the color, uh, of the painting, rather and the right side reads whites. So as you can see, it's perfectly black and white now. See, black here is reading the darker parts, and white here is reading the lighter parts. So if I change the black, you'll see that to red, if I change the, part, the black parts to red, you'll see that the dark parts are red, are that color. So if I change it to purple, it's the you know, same thing. But I like to keep it down here, so just for like realism's sake. So it's, it helps to not put it at the darkest value. Uh, I think I learned that from uh, other uh, art, art channels as well, where 
there shouldn't be absolute dark or absolute white in your values so, uh, just to make it uh, more believable so here uh, closer to black is red and then the lightest let's say let's make it green not too bright either but it's good enough so yeah uh, basically uh, this is what I'm getting to and now let's start coloring the armor first so as you can see there is a black here uh, they're, they're the darkest parts are closer to black or like black red and then the lighter parts are a light blue green so there's a midsection we can put in here now you can always change this you can always change uh, the, the color for the midsection as you can see I colored it blue so so you can see a little bit of the red the dark red there and the light blue so yeah this is probably the most workable in terms of simplicity like this is the most simple gradient you can come up with if you want to make uh, believable colors so okay let's work with this we're gonna be coloring the armor now uh, I colored the I colored the armor uh, sort of this way but I added more colors to it like yellow and purple uh, just for subtlety and uh, to add more dynamism I feel in the color scheme but okay what we're gonna do here is you see this white uh, you see this white what do you call this canvas on the layer okay you should go to command I or control I if you're on a windows and you'll invert it to black which may which makes it invisible you can't really see the gradient unlike before so what I'm gonna do now is it's black right so you just need black and white really to color in your colors if that makes any sense so watch this I'm gonna color on the armor with white with the color white on my brush you see that yeah it's quite magical I quite figured it out myself so so let's say you you're done with that it's gonna look like this now I decreased the opacity on this one because I felt like it would mix better with the black and white. So it's on 50 right now. If I put it up to 100, you'll see that it's very strong. I don't really like it because it messes up the values a bit. So I try to make it blend better with the 50% opacity. Okay, so that's the armor. And now we're going to color the bone, which is these parts here. Like this part, this part this part etc so now we're gonna do that same process you create a gradient map then you edit your gradient let's say bone well I saved some here I've, I've saved some gradients because I really like the color now as you can see this gradient is quite complex I put a bunch of colors in there you don't really need to do this yet but it helps too so anyway let's go with that oh by the way if you if you want to save these gradients go make a gradient here and then go to new and then you create another gradient I've created three of those by you know just because it's habitual and I wanted to show you guys so yeah so anyway we've done that and then convert it to black with command I or control I and then start painting in the places you want to paint in with white so yeah as you can see it's quite magical remember you can always adjust the opacity of this Heck, you can even adjust the gradient itself. So if I were to change the yellows in it, you know, you see that yeah, it's quite subtle, but you can change it to, let's say, purple. You can change it to green. You know, it's up to you. But I prefer to leave it like that, and eventually it'll turn into something like this. It's art attack as hell, right? So anyway, uh, that's how I went about it. Uh, later on you'll be able to blend these parts in you know you could there's a lot of different ways to go about this but this is how I personally colored the whole piece so eventually like we get to coloring the armor here which uh, which is for me gold or brass and then you know you get you get the cloth he has underlying and you get the armor so as you can see it's quite multi-purpose because the same, the color scheme I used for the gold also worked as a color scheme for the flame. And originally in the, pre, in the piece I made, the original piece, I didn't really use gradient maps for the flame. I used it for the, um, 
for the armor and the bones and stuff. For the flame, I used a Photoshop trick that I hope to show not in this video right now. So anyway, yeah, that's it. That's basically how I colored it. As you can see, the background is still black and white, but we'll get to that. This is really easy. You know, it's funny because you don't really need a mouse. You don't even, you don't really need it. Sorry, you don't really need a Wacom tablet to do all this stuff. You just need a mouse. But of course, if you have any mercy left for your hand, I suggest you get a Wacom tablet. It's not very merciful on your wallet, but it's worth it if you want to do this stuff. So anyway, last step before rendering it further is I add an overall gradient map. So let's say it can go under. There you see that. So basically it does all the hard work for you when you color the background. You can either go under or over. Now I prefer under because over looks like you're putting a filter through it. So this is also on 50. If I max it up, you can see it's really strong. It's really cool, the effect. It's kind of, uh, uh, how do I say this? It's like a zeal, a, zeal, a zealous thing that it's going on. It's like you're trying to emphasize something, but it's not really for me. So I decided to go a little subtler and make it 50% uh, also. So that is basically it, you know. But uh, bear in mind, this is how I do it. But it's not the end because I still have to unify everything by rendering everything. So let's say this part right here. The only time I ever really use color is when I grab this and then I move it out. And then things become smoother. You see? Stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of YouTube videos like this from more popular artists, I'm sure. But uh, this is my personal take on the gradient map method, and I hope you enjoyed it. So, I say so a lot, don't I? Please comment what else I say a lot, because I'm not used to this stuff. But anyway, uh, this, is my, this is the hue saturation layer. Uh, I like to give my pieces more vibrance nowadays, so I, I set a hue saturation to... You can put it up here in image, oh, or you can go back to where you find, you can go back to where you find the gradient map and go to hue saturation. Then I like to amp the saturation up to 25%. And then as you can see, it's quite vibrant. Well, more vibrant than I usually make them. So yeah, that's basically how you do it. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, any more concerns? Am I speaking too fast? Am I too awkward? Am I, you know, well, I can fix that. But if you have uh, regarding your own paintings, I'd be happy to help. So, but anyway, this is how I built it all up to this. Uh, the flames are a different trick entirely, and I'd be happy to share that later on. You can also see that uh, I learned this trick, the fire trick, from Noah Bradley's level up session. On YouTube, which I will also link in the description. So uh, I hope to see you guys later on. And uh, yeah, this was my step by step. Cheers.